Hello and welcome back to the podcast, the Barbells with Banter podcast. Now you might be thinking, Callum, is, it, is this a new podcast? No, your mind isn't deceiving you. This was formerly known, until recently, as the Callum Sully podcast. I've changed it. I did it for a couple of reasons. Number one, fancied a bit of a change, okay, a bit of a revamp. Number two, you know, when I first named the podcast back in 2020 when I launched, well, that was the name of my brand, Callum Sully Fitness. So I just went with Callum Sully Podcast. Um, but then more recently, uh, the podcast has kind of become its own entity in itself. So I wanted to rename it to reflect that and give the podcast its own brand, its own um, entity, if you will. So Barbells with Banter um, became a new thing. So, yeah, it's all been changed on all platforms. So, yeah, it's not a new podcast. It's the same thing. Um, And not only that, a lot of the guests that I'm having are, you know, I've got people from all across the world, psychologists, nutritionists, dietitians, GPs, mindset coaches, authors, uh, musicians, you name it. So there's always a bit of banter on the way, and therefore barbells and banter began. So I've not recorded for a while. some of you may be wondering why. Um, try and keep this short. <laughs> What's been going on with me? You know, when I got COVID back in July 2022, almost instantly after tested positive, I started to experience very bizarre neurological symptoms that, as far as I'm aware, I'd not heard anybody telling me about. Now, as an asthmatic, my primary concern with COVID was that it was going to get to my lungs, right? Not really. Um, and then I was having very strange dreams that night, very vivid dreams, felt sick as a dog, and I thought, well, this is a weird, you know, COVID fever. And I was going live on a group the day after, second day I tested positive, and I was in bed poorly. It definitely kicked the shit out of me. But um, I was going live on one of my blueprint groups, and midway through live streaming and talking like i am now I can only describe it as i literally had a dream while i was awake right proper like if you ever watched nightmare on elm street uh, you know where they're purposely trying not to sleep so they end up you know sleep depth causes them to dream while they're awake well it was like that and it lasted a few seconds i felt this rising sickness from my body at the same time and i thought okay and i i can literally pinpoint i can go back and watch that video i can't remember what group it was on and i can pinpoint the very moment where it happened and i'm talking like i am now and i just stopped and this 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 thing happened and i thought what the hell is going on and and it was literally a what the fuck moment and i just carried on Uh, i i'd literally just went uh sorry (laughs) carried on (laughs) This continued happening, and I rang the doctor straight away for what good they are. I rang the GP, and I'm like, look, I'm having this weird COVID hallucination. Now, of course, the doctor Googled beforehand, as, as we do, and all my symptoms match something that I didn't want to believe. So I um, thought, no, it's a COVID hallucination. Started when I had COVID. Rang the GP. He's like, well, and I said, look, it's deja vu. Like, I'm having extreme deja vu. And he was like, well, what do you mean deja vu? I'm thinking, well, you're the one with the medical training. <laughs> you tell me. And he was like, oh, well, COVID's still so new. You know, write it down, wait it out. So I did. And it happened a few more times, daytime, nighttime. Didn't make a difference. Okay. Um, and it stopped. So I thought, okay, that was definitely a weird COVID symptom then. Okay. And I couldn't find it anywhere deep into the NHS archives and, you know, the paid research, this, this, this symptom I was having wasn't aligned with COVID anyway. Now, for the rest of 2022, I was fine. But I always look back and think, that was weird what happened like that. And so I continued to research. And every time I did, came back with the same outcome. Then in January 2023, this year, uh, I started having little moments uh, and I could be 
mid conversation with a client, a one to one client, and literally I can describe it as my brain would just teleport somewhere else and back again all within seconds. And it would kind of make me jump a little bit. I'm like, what the hell? And it would stop me mid conversation. I'd have to say to my client, so sorry, what was we just talking about? And this happened a few times. Then I'd moved house, okay, and I'll never forget, it was March the 25th. I'm walking my dog, and I drove to a field to walk my dog, and it happened again. The exact same thing that happened when I had COVID, and I even shouted out to my dog, no, not again. And this one lasted ages. I even got in the car to drive back home with the dog, and like I just kept having flashes of like memories, but I couldn't understand if they were real or not, or did I dream them. It was like constant deja vu, but like flashes of it. Probably wasn't safe to drive back then. So I went back to the doctor, as advised to do medically, and I tried to explain all this. Um, the doctor, who I won't name, but was shocking. I already knew what this was, but I wanted, didn't want to be accused of Googling. I wanted to let him do his job. So I explained all my symptoms, and he referred me as migraines. And he was kind of laughing when I'm trying to explain my symptoms, because I sound like a crazy person. Try and explain it right so i'm not going to bore you guys with the details but he was like migraines i'm like but i'm not having migraines and he was like well there's no medical term for deja vu and i kind of just looked at him someone who's had 10 years of medical training he was a locum doctor but the point remains the same and i said to him i think we both know that's not true don't we and then only then did i eventually say okay well what about epilepsy and he turned around to me and his exact words were, oh, if you want to go down that route, you shouldn't be driving. God's honest truth. Someone crying out for help, that's his response. And I'll never forget it. So he did book me a referral for an MRI and to go and have an EEG and whatever. Um, I'm still, to this date, it's now coming to the end of October 2023. I still don't have that appointment. Right? Anyway, um, this kept happening sometimes once every couple of weeks and it got down to once a week and it got down to a few times a week and it was to the point where it's happening at work while i'm in the gym and i thought okay so i went back to the gp and i said i had a different doctor and i said right this time i'm not asking i'm telling you i'm experiencing seizures and i want my mri brought forward yesterday right like as soon as possible now we did and he changed my referral to temporal lobe epilepsy finally we're all on the same page because i've known that for the last eight months and um he did and it was brought forward by a month for great but then he started getting really bad like i was having multiple a day whilst i'm at work and my clients could pick up on it and i was having what we call cluster seizures and um I went right enough's enough it was a saturday it was the saturday of the bank holiday weekend i rang the doctor prefers and said look should i should i be going a and e here which a lot of nurses that i train and that i work with my clients were telling me to do and the doctor says well you, you can try you might end you might end up right back where you are but go to a certain hospital because i know they've got an mri there in a and e okay off so i took myself my wife took me because I'd already stopped driving by that point, as advised. Um, had my CT scan because I couldn't get on the MRI. And long and behold, sat down and I'm told I have a mass on my temporal lobe. My first emotion was anger. I got my wife at the side of me. I can see her about to have a panic attack at the news. And all I can think of is please don't do this to her. Okay. but i knew i kind of knew something wasn't right so my first thought was i've known something was up for the last year i've told the doctors and yet i've been brushed to the side but the doctor who sat me down at a and e said to me you made a smart decision coming here today think about that i chose to take myself to a and e because these seizures were getting unbearable and yet the original appointment that the referral that had been made by a GP back in April, right now, I still haven't had a date for. Think about that. Okay. 
So I was in hospital for a few days, stopped driving, stopped working uh, in person. Um, still wasn't, it was tried on medication and they stopped it. So I was left for eight weeks unmedicated, having multiple seizures, not working, not driving. Uh, it would do me insane. And then eventually I went back. Um, I went for this appointment to, I was referred to Salford. So, so I can actually go and see a neurologist for the first time in a year. Because at this point I thought they were mythical creatures that didn't exist. I explained all the symptoms yet again to a neurologist and he's there nodding away. He knew what this was before I'd even finished explaining. No EEG needed. He's got the scans, by the way, because I did have an MRI. He's got, he, he couldn't see the scan in front of him, but he could see the notes that the radiologists and, and the neurosurgeons had all um, decided on. And within seconds, he went, yeah, here's your medication. You, you have epilepsy. What's the cause? You have a low-grade glioma. Ladies and gentlemen, I have a brain tumor. I'm very public about this, by the way. A, for awareness, and B, I'm, I'm an open book. That's just what I am. That's what I do. And for those of you that might be gasping if you're listening at this point, listen, I've come to terms with this already. Bear in mind, I've known what this was for quite some time. So I wasn't shocked. I then had an appointment with a neurosurgeon, and I was shocked to see how big it was because it wasn't as small as the CT scan they told me. They told me at the hospital originally that it's one centimetre, small little mass. No, 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 it's much bigger than that, ladies and gents. Um, so now as I sit here, they did start the conversation by saying they don't think it's cancerous, but it's certainly going to become it if it carries on growing. And I want you to just rewind here, guys. I went to the doctors in April. I was referred for migraines, despite my symptoms. It's now October, what's the date? Oh, it's, <laughs> it's now, yeah. I haven't got the date, it's now October the 22nd. I still haven't had an appointment come through from that original referral made in April. I mean, in the meantime, took myself to A&E, had some scans, been diagnosed with epilepsy, which I already knew, and I've been told I have a potentially benign brain tumour. And I still don't have my appointment come through from the original referral made in April at the GP. If that's not one of the saddest things you've ever heard, I want you to know, just imagine if I'd never took myself to A&E. I'd have this thing growing in my head, potentially wait until 2024, and it could be too late. So that's what's been up with me. <laughs> uh, and you might be thinking, Carl, how, how are you just coping? Well, because, listen, one thing that this has done for me, I am on medication now, which is helping with the seizures, um, which has allowed me to go back to work slowly and do what I love. Listen, I work online, and I, thankfully I've got an online business, and that's kept me going. But um, I'm also quite happy to get back to work a little bit so i have been going back doing some classes members are happy to see me and stuff i've been posting about this on my social media so if i can get back to some normal because in my mind guys i can either sit at home and mope about it or i can go to work either way there's a tumor in my head there's nothing i can do about it um there is something i can do about it and now i've got another mri as i record this podcast coming up in a week or so just to see where it's at now um I guess it's protocol. They've got to do it before I opt for surgery. They cut into my brain, try and remove it, and then I probably will have to have um, some chemo, radio to shrink the remains around it. And then, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to be making frequent visits to the neurosurgeon probably for the rest of my life. But I'm okay. Listen, it's taught me a lot of gratitude, a lot of appreciation. Um, the things around me I'm grateful for. I'm grateful for my job, get to do the job that I love. There was many people that in my position would have had to have time off work that would have been on sick pay or no pay. I was in a very fortunate position where my income wasn't affected. And I'm so extremely lucky and grateful and thankful for that. I'm thankful for my family around me, um, my gorgeous, gorgeous animals, my dog, my best friend, who's, you know, always by my side because he knows dogs aren't stupid they know what's up 
I'm more bothered about this, if you're watching this on video, I'm more bothered about this massive spot that's developed right in the middle of, between my eyes, above my nose, in the middle of my head, as I record this video podcast. That I'm more annoyed about that. So anyway, there you go, there's a 15 minute breakdown of what I've been up to. Let's get into the good stuff, fitness. Now I posted, um, I posted a survey on my social media uh, last week, and the purpose of this was to get an idea of what people want help with, yeah, what advice they want me to give. There's no point me talking about, you know, the carbs in a potato if people aren't interested in carbs in a potato. So I ran a survey, I had quite a lot of people fill it out, and it gave me a good idea of the kind of stuff that people really want help with right now with their fitness. And that's part of the topics that we're going to be talking about on this podcast today. Now, with it being autumn, a lot of the answers were centered around obviously the cold weather summer's over people's holidays are over so now it's a case of okay well your goals right what now now when it comes to autumn it's important not to just let your go your goals go because the summer's over this is my favorite time of the year for fitness believe it or not because even though Christmas is associated with chocolate and you know socializing, drinking, more reason to start now to get yourself a goal for your health and fitness planned out before Christmas. And let's think of the things that we can focus on. Yeah, we can focus on Christmas parties. If you've got a Christmas party for your work. One of your goals might be that you want your colleagues to see you in that Christmas outfit, that dress, you know. If you perhaps you've got a Christmas ball, you've got a prom, or perhaps your partner's got a works Christmas party and you want to look good for that. These are perfect goals to start training for now because we've still got plenty of time till December comes and there's plenty of time to shrink a dress size or two. Trust me on that one. So... For letting go of the summer, it's not always about having your top off. It's not always about being in a bikini. It's not always about looking good for a holiday. Because ultimately, you get fit and healthy for a holiday. If we're all, you know, we eat and drink while we're on a holiday, we come back, we feel flumpier and, you know, even more unhealthy than we was when we went. And then we kind of just let ourselves go. And it's like, ah, sit now. And I tend to find that the winter months are overlooked. Why do you think January is so busy in the fitness industry? Why do you think New Year's resolutions largely revolve around people going, right, this is my year, I'm going to to lose weight and get fit and healthy this year? And the cycle repeats. You can get on top of that now in October. The worst thing you can do is wait until after Christmas and then go, when it gets to the New Year, and go, right, Okay, got to sort got to sort this out now. Uh, you know, I'm unhappy. I've, I'm not fit. I'm not healthy. I, I'm, I'm heavier and bigger than I've ever been. I've got to get on top of this now. You know, the thing is for me, you can still do that. January is a very motivational month. I get it, but you can start now. You can operation damage control. You can reduce the workload in January. Now, because what happens is people get to January, they have all these goals, and then as a result of that pressure, very quickly do they stop, they quit, they go backwards. And I see this all the time. I remember I worked at a gym, it was a commercial gym, hotel gym, a um, leisure centre really, but it was a gym. And January, I remember because we were attached to a hotel, you, obviously we had hospitality. You had the leisure and then you had the accommodation. And in Christmas time in hospitality, by the way, guys, is the busiest period, right? Mother's Day is the biggest day in hospitality, by the way, FYI. I did work in hospitality for years before I became a personal trainer, so I know this. But in terms of a season, it's Christmas. Why? Because of things I mentioned before, yeah? Christmas parties, um, family gatherings, right? People are busy. Yeah, hospitality is busy over the festive season. 
So what would happen to us in December at the gym side of the hotel is we'd be dead. You, of course, you've got people, you've got your regulars. Uh, a lot of hotel guests would still come and, and utilise gym, but it was a very quiet period for us. And then something interesting would happen. It'd be a switchover. And bear in mind, at this hotel I've worked at twice, I was on both sides of the coin both times. So the first time I worked there, back when I was 19, I was in the kitchen side. I was in the hospitality side. And I remember the gym at the time being quiet. The second time I went back to this hotel as a personal trainer, I was on the gym side. So it was the, the flip. The flip. So I've seen it from both ends of the coin. And it got to January and boom. The hospitality section is now quiet. In fact, when I first worked at this hotel, it was zero-hour contracts. They'd lay a lot of people off at the start of the year. Okay, That did happen to me. Things have changed now, but you know that was back in 2008 or something like that. And now in the gym, boom, absolute chaotic. I remember we had a book, and it was a sign-up book. So when people would come and join the gym, and in January, you'd fill up a big A4 book. You'd fill up three to four pages full of names, both sides, of new joiners. And then we used to play a little game. By the time it came to March, the beginning of March, how many of those names were still there? Ladies and gentlemen, 20% of all the new joiners were still members at the gym by March. Now, what does that tell you? Well, it tells you that everyone has the right intention. January is motivational. New year, new me. Yeah, and we're talking about it now in October to prevent you from being one of the 80%. I want you to be the 20%. I want you to use January, absolutely. But by March, I want you still on top of your health and fitness. And it happens to me on the work off, okay, on my online flagship program. I run one in January every year, always busy because it's January. And then I give people the opportunity after they join the work off and they get results because it's the work off, it's the best program around, so of course they do. And I give them the opportunity to join my membership group, my Shape with Sully membership group, which is an ongoing um, group that I have fantastic clients um, a part of. I give them the opportunity to carry on the journey. And some of them do. And again, by the time it gets to March, they're gone. Some of them don't join the membership group, but then by the time I've run a work off in the Easter summer months, they're back. Why? Because they put all that weight back on again. I don't want you to be that person. That's why we're talking about this here on the on the episode. So utilize October to prevent that from happening. You can still get motivated. You can still enjoy your Christmas. You can still get motivated and start afresh in January because Christmas is over. There's nothing. There's there's like this bit between Christmas and Easter where there's not much going on unless you've got a holiday booked for the February half term. Not many people do much. So that's the perfect time to get motivated with a New Year's resolution and get on top of your health and fitness until Easter. And then holiday season begins. And that's that's cool. But you can minimise the impact of that if you start now. So how would you do that? Well, okay, best thing, as I said before, Christmas parties. If you want to get in it, drop a dress size. So your goal could just be drop a dress size or two. There's plenty of time. One thing you can do, you can buy, if you've got a Christmas party coming up with work or you, perhaps your spouse has a Christmas party or anything like that, you know, we have a Christmas party for my gym members. So it's not a works Christmas party, but, you know, perhaps you're a part of a gym that has Christmas parties. You definitely want to look good for that, right? Show off the work. I would go and buy myself an outfit that you plan to wear for Christmas over the Christmas period now and deliberately buy it two dress sizes smaller than what you are now keep the receipt <laughs> keep the tack on it if you want to but do that and then what i want you to do is don't hide it away hang it at the front of your wardrobe where you can look at it every day to act as a reminder because if we took it away it's very easy to forget very easy to keep the receipt and take it back and have that be your goal you've got plenty of time from now you got all of November into December. You've got a good six weeks before Christmas parties start happening. 
okay? That's your goal. And then what happens is you, you're still going to eat and drink and enjoy your festive season, but you've put in all that work from October to November. So you're not going to undo all that damage over Christmas, hopefully. But now what happens is you will gain a little bit of weight again. That's fine. But now by the time you get to January, a lot of that workload was already done in October. So you don't have have a lot of the Christmas damage to undo. But ladies and gents, mainly ladies who are listening to this podcast from all across the world, if you leave it, okay, if you leave and just ignore autumn or fall, okay, a lot of my listeners are Canadian, American, okay, on the other side of the pond, if you leave it now and just ignore it and wait for January, you are going to be that 20% that quit by March. I guarantee you that. So utilising... Setting realistic goals right now, utilizing autumn, fall, okay, as the weather starts getting colder. Now, it's very easy at this time of year to go, well, it's easier said than done, Callum, but you know, we've got, we've got a lot to contend with here. You know, the nights are drawing in, okay, the clocks, daylight savings coming to an end, the clocks are going to go back, well, as I record this next week, the end of October which is going to make the nights draw in. It's going to make the daylight shorter, okay, as we head towards the winter solstice from the autumn equinox. And basically, the challenges are it's going to be dark, it's going to be cold, okay, so you might not be going out doing outdoor classes, you might not be getting as many steps in because the weather's not very um, good. You, you might be a woman that's not comfortable going walking out in the dark, okay, I completely understand that, okay, I have, a, I have a 17 year old daughter, I don't want her walking in the dark, okay, so there are many restrictions in place, and I get it, but what can you do, well, I call, I call autumn fall slow cooker season, so from the nutrition standpoint, okay, what we can do, because we're not, you know, we're not having salads and stuff. We tend to want more warmer, comforting food. And that can still happen. Make the slow cooker your best friend. I've talked about this in the past. Make the slow cooker your best friend. If you get up in the morning, do a bit of prep. You can even do it the night before. You can prep your slow cooker meal the night before. Get it all, you know, prepped, chopped up in a Tupperware. Put it in the fridge. Get your slow cooker on in the morning. Throw it all in. Go to work or go about your day. Your food, your meal is cooking for you for the rest of the day. You don't have to do anything else. And by the time it gets even, so if you're someone who's like, well, Callum, you know, I work nine to five. I've been at work all day. By the time I finish work, it's getting dark. It's cold. I just want to go home. The last thing I want to do is go to the gym or go out walking or do any workouts. The last thing I want to do is start making food. You know, it's easier for me just to grab something convenient. I get it. But the slow cooker can help with the nutrition side because you've already prepped in the morning. You've already helped yourself the night before and then in the morning. So by the time you've finished your work, it's your meal's there in the slow cooker waiting for you. All you have to do, get a plate, bowl, portion yourself up, job done. Same for the kids. Okay, If you're not at home to do it, get someone else, get your spouse, get a friend, flatmate, whatever it is, do it for you. Take it in turns. Now, you don't have to have the slow cooker going every day. But if you can do that two times a week, three times a week, is that not better than reaching for the ready meals from the freezer or calling for a takeaway? Because it's very tempting to do that when it's cold, dark, it's raining outside, might be snowing. You live in my town. It probably will snow next week, if I'm honest. So that's how we can handle our nutrition. That's one way. All right, there's so many devices now. You know, you've got slow cookers, air fryers, rice cookers. This, everyone's kitchens are full of all these fancy devices, but they're there to help you. They're there to eliminate the excuses that you would have five, yeah, five years ago. There are things you can buy now, which, you know, they chop your salad, the ninja, you know, ninja air fryer, ninja uh, chopper, chop all your food for you. There's no excuses anymore, guys. There are now things that make your life easier. You might say, Callum, you know, I don't earn that much. I can't buy all these fancy things. 
you can find a lot of second-hand versions of, of slow cookers and air fryers very cheap now okay um as far as the exercise is concerned i get it it's cold it's dark you don't want to work out all right unless you're forced to either go to the gym and work out indoors all right perhaps you can't afford the gym perhaps again it's dark you're not motivated to get to the gym like you would be in the summer you know you might want to get the steps in if it's cold it's dark get a stepper now i've told people about this you can find a stepper go on amazon now i tell you what while we're here i'm going to have a look i'm going to type in here in google okay let's sort by price low to high as we always do there you go tanner tanner 20 quid 15 quid steppers all right now what these steppers do people think like when you walk you have to go walking outside now while that will help with your cardiovascular system your respiratory system taking in the air you know the gradient changes walking forward is a bit more beneficial to walking stationary but the thing is the reason we're walking is to increase our total daily energy expenditure we're burning calories we're keeping our heart rate up we're moving our body so we're burning calories if you are at home you finish work and you're just staying where you are on a stepper you are still walking you're still moving okay you can go even better if you've got a cross trainer because you're getting your arms involved as well but you can hit your steps on a stepper if you can't afford a stepper all right well it, if your house has stairs right unless you're in a bungalow if your house has stairs and you've got steps at the bottom you can literally just do stair walks you can literally just step up and down off the, between the bottom and the, the next step up and just go up down up down do that for 20 minutes put tv on the background listen to a podcast listen to this podcast listen to music just walk up and down yeah up up down down up up down down don't have to be intense you're still walking the point i'm trying to get out here guys is there's no excuse not to get your steps okay driving to the supermarket park at the very end the furthest point the furthest parking space you can find away from the supermarket park there walk to, walk further to the, the shop entrance go and picking your kids up from school park as far back as you can guess what benefits them too you can get seven to eight thousand steps per day easy i don't care what anyone says you can do it i've just given you some tips so i get it <clears throat> brings me on to walking actually the absolute best way to lose weight is to move walk you don't need to do spin classes you don't need to do zumba you don't need to go for a 5k run every day you don't even need to do a 20 minute home workout nothing wrong with those things they're all beneficial all you need to do is walk and walk more than you've walked for a long time weight loss is and i don't care what anyone says weight loss is as simple as moving more eating less now before i get the pitchforks out before people start come rush into the comments oh yeah it's easy for you to say calories has been disproved and all that bullshit right no james smith has said this best right when you look at your dog and your dog is getting a bit flumpy you take the dog to the vets vet says Okay, your dog's a little bit overweight, so we've got some health concerns. We have to put them on, you know, he's, the dog's going to have to lose a bit of weight. Do you suddenly think, tell you what my dog needs, lemon water? Oh, I wonder if Juice Plus have got a subscription for pets. Fuck off. Of course you don't. What do you think? 
I'm going to have to cut down on my dog's meals and I'm going to have to walk him a bit more. So why then do we think that our anatomy and our physiology is any different? Yet humans, oh, weight loss is so hard. Uh, I'm going to try lemon water. I'm going to try intermittent fasting. I'm going to do juice plus, a skinny coffee club, a slimming world. Let's follow a points-based system. Let's just, I tell you what, do you say to, if your dog needs to lose weight, do you say, as long as he doesn't eat avocados, but he can eat as much pasta as he wants, he'll be fine. Fuck oh, off. Of course you don't. Slimming world is a money-making machine. It's a disgrace, actually. Right? But we won't get into that. We're not going to get into that. I've been, I've been at war with Slimming World for those that have followed me a while for the last eight years. Probably longer. We're not going to go there today. But the point remains. What do you get them to do? First thing you get them to do, I need to take my dog out on a few more walks. I'm probably going to take him on a longer walk than normal. I'm going to give my dog more exercise. You're not going to strap a bar. You're not going to give your dog a barbell and get into the fight. You're not going to get your dog to do burpees in front of a YouTube video. You're not going to take your dog to a jump, a bounce class, jumping on a trampoline. Nothing wrong with that, but you're not doing that. What do you do? I need to take my dog out for a few more walks. I'm probably going to cut down on how much I feed him a day. So why then do we think we humans are any different? Oh, Callum, it's easy to say, I've tried everything, lose weight, nothing's working. Have you tried eating less shit? Have you tried, okay, scanning through my fitness pal when you're counting your calories and logging in how many wines and ciders you've had this week? Or did you just ignore that because it's alcohol, it's a drink, it doesn't count? It does. Calories are calories. Move. Move. Is my first thing. I get the first thing I get my clients to do online in person, move. I cannot tell you how many times I've been out. I spoke about this before. Been out. Now I'll go out on a night out, and of course, you know I'm a PT. People know me. They know that. They're going to ask me, Callum, how do I get rid of my belly? How how do I lose weight? What tips have you got? And they're shocked when I turn around to them and say, Have you tried eating less? And, and, and <laughs> they look at me flabbergasted because they think I'm going to give them some sort of exotic exercise or a little secret ingredient that they don't know about. No. Let's stop deviating from what we already know. Let's stop trying to find any secret to avoid the fact that we're fucking lazy and we don't. We know what we need to do. We know what we'd need to get our dog to do if it needed to lose weight. We know what we need to do. But we can't be bothered to do that. We don't want to do that. Because that's invasive. That, gets, that, intervene, that interferes with the things that we enjoy in life. That's getting home, having a drink, socialising, having takeaways, eating chocolate, the things that we love, lazing around watching Netflix. Nothing wrong with that, by the way. But change comes with sacrifice. The pain of change is far less than the pain of staying the same for a lot of people a lot of listeners here a lot of the people who follow me they look at themselves i get it all the time and i know that because i put out these surveys and i get responses i get people messaging me dropping in my inbox callum i'm so unhappy with myself i can bear i can't bear to look in the mirror oh i can't i don't even want to put that dress on because i know it's going to make me feel shit I want to change. Something needs to change. But then when I tell him to start moving and walking, oh, no, I can't. Oh, it's cold. Oh, no, I can't. I've got a bad knee. Oh, no. Every excuse already, just in the consultation, starts coming out. People, the, but like I said, the pain that you're experiencing now, if you are that person that's unhappy with your weight right now, the way you look, Okay. perhaps you're bigger and heavier than you've ever been. Nothing wrong with that, by the way. But you might not be happy with that. I want you to ask yourself, when you look in the mirror, or when you put on an item of clothing that you can't fit in anymore, it's too tight, when you feel that, that pain, okay, that frustration, that guilt, that sadness, 
insecurity is that not more detrimental to your mental and physical health than the temporary temporary uncomfortability of exercise and moving more the temporary un the uncomfortability of choosing an apple over a slice of pizza I think you've got the answer to that guys already yeah the pain of change is far less than the pain of staying the same so move move now of course there are other tools we can follow but I want to try and deviate this and get into the mental health and I want to tie this in with how I started this episode and tell me about where I'm at at the moment none of it matters without the right mindset now when I ran this survey I was very I wasn't surprised but I was overwhelmed with just how much when I, when I asked the questions like what are you struggling with the most I was overwhelmed with just how much of it was to do with the mental health anxiety depression one thing I've learned during this cloud of shit that's been on top of me over the last year is that gratitude is the king it's the way out I truly believe gratitude is the way out of depression I really do and listen I've been there I've been there more times than not I carry myself well you know I'm on camera I go to the gym in front of all my clients online doing workouts I carry myself very well to them I'm dandy I'm great but often often I'm not I'm not doing okay and you'd be surprised how many people you walk past they've got a smile on their face like hi here morning and you think oh they're they're all good they're all happy obviously shit's not happening to them you'd be surprised and take it from someone who works with hundreds of people day to day online in person I, uh, I work with hundreds of people day to day so nothing's saying that you know you don't put your mental health first you never know what the person next to you is going through okay now the reason why we're talking about the mental health side is before you go trying to change your body you've got to get your mind right and as i said before i truly believe that gratitude is the way out of depression okay oh callum you can't say that you know you don't understand depression you, you, you can't say stuff like that listen i get it i've had cbt medication i've had it all i've been depressed more times than not i'm not now you'd think if there's any time to be it'd be now but i'm not do you know why gratitude it is hard to be depressed to be negative when you're thankful for something when you're truly appreciative and thankful to things in life it's very very difficult for anything else to get you down because when you do it for long enough you start to condition your mind to spin things around if you practice gratitude long enough that it becomes a subconscious mindset almost anything that gets in your way and that things are going to get in your way life is never going to be full of roses there is always going to be shit that happens in the world that will affect you or things that will directly affect you personally and if you've adopted a gratitude mindset it's almost impossible for you to get affected by it because you naturally turn around and go well this is shit but at least and it's that but that but right there and i got to a point before all this happened where that was me yeah life is shit you know but and the way to do this in my opinion um there's some good books that i recommend um 
Loving What Is by Byron Katie. A lot of my work came from a guy, Paul Moore. Okay. He's a life coach, works with men. A dare changed my life. I thanked him many times. I got the pleasure to meet him and tell him that. But he was all, his teachings is all about not leaving your feelings to chance. So when you're truly upset by something, no one upset you, you upset yourself. You allowed the information to upset you. You got yourself upset. Now, I'm not saying that other people, the content of the words or actions of other people don't cause the upset. Of course they do. But you have a choice. You can either choose to let it affect you, or you can just go, yeah, that's, that's hurtful, but. And that's that word, but. And people say the word but a lot, but in the other way. Oh, I could do this, but. Oh, I should be happy, but. So people are happy to use the word but in a negative way to make up excuses for why their life isn't going great. All you have to do is turn it around. So I would write down in the morning, I'd plan my feelings. And that sounds a bit taboo. What do you mean, plan my feelings? I can't plan how I, I'm going to feel. I feel how I feel. Wrong. A feeling is your body's way of letting you know where your mind is. You've heard the term thoughts of feelings, right? Yeah. You don't have to believe all that. But I do, but from a psychological standpoint, not a mythical standpoint, a psychological standpoint, your thoughts... Your feelings are a direct reflection, like a mirror image of your current mindset. I feel shit right now. Well, guess what? That's probably a reflection of the thoughts that are going through your head right now. Feelings are a way of your mind letting you know where your mind is currently at. You know? I'm feeling sad right now. I don't know what it is, I just feel really low right now. Well, that's because you're thinking thoughts of sadness. So how do we turn this around, in my opinion? Based on poor work, this is not me. This is, this is work of different people that I've worked with. Jamie Alderton, um, Paul Moore. Going even further, Bob Proctor. You know, Rhonda Byrne. The, 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 all different approaches. People that I've had here on the podcast have taught me a lot, work with psychologists, mindset coaches, but it all leads to the same thing. And there's one thing in common that all of them, all of these people that I've taken knowledge from, one thing in common that they all say, gratitude. Okay, All the different approaches come to the same thing, gratitude. Because that's the best way to start feeling good, to shift that mindset, that paradigm shift. So what I do is I write down how I plan to feel that day. And I'd write down three things in a journal. Today I plan to feel. Okay. And then I'd write down, okay, what, what do I need to do to feel that way? And then I'll write down what barriers will there be today? What, what will get in my way? And then finally, number four, what what is something I can look forward to today? Now this doesn't sound very exotic, but when I started to, and then at the end of the day, so I start the morning like that, plan my feelings, plan, you know, acknowledge what might happen today to get me in a bad mood, to stress me out, plan the things that make me feel good that I can do to counter that, and then at the end of the day, before I go to sleep, I write down three wins. Three wins of the day. No matter what shit day you've had, you can always find a win, no matter how small. And I started to find something interesting that happened to me. If you write this down enough, it starts to become a subconscious trigger. You, start, you don't even need to write things down anymore. You just naturally do it. And guys, I truly believe if I hadn't have done this for the last year, and I haven't practiced gratitude every single day. I don't know how I would have handled the news that I was given this year. 
I don't think know if I could have handled a double whammy of being told that yes, you have epilepsy and you also have a brain tumor. I don't think I could have handled that. But because of my gratitude that I practiced, because I was grateful of having an amazing job, having an amazing supportive family and friends, having my health, my my youth to help combat this, yeah, it's shit. But rather than feeling sorry for myself, thinking, why me, why me, I hate the world, and falling into depression, my natural flip is, well, could be worse. I'm alive and breathing. I have the luxury of still being able to walk my dog. I have the luxury of still being able to help other people with their fitness. I may not be able to exercise myself right now. I can't lift weights, but I can use my knowledge to help other people do that. And you can do the same. Be grateful of what's around you. Even if your life is right in the shit, there will be something you can do. Start small, and before you know it, you will change your mindset. So before we try and work on our body, our nutrition, we've got to get our mindset right. When I work on my programs, I center around those three things, mindset, nutrition, and exercise. And it's usually in that order, because we have to get our mind right, setting our goals, appreciating what we can do, People quit at the beginning because they're already thinking, oh, well, I, can't, I, get, I can't tell you how many phone calls I get for people who want to sign up to one of my programs or join my gym. Right, but before we get, I, I want, I'm interested in joining a gym, but before we get started, I'm going to let you know, uh, I've got bad knees, I can't do this, I can't really walk, I don't do well with it. They're giving me their excuses to justify not joining the gym or starting a program before they've even got going. So... It will change your mindset. And you've got to get that mindset right before. Then, then, nutrition. Because the diet needs to come next. The diet's a huge part in any weight loss journey. In fact, it's the most part. Then exercise. Now, you might think, Callum, as a personal trainer, how comes exercise is last? Because exercise is the hardest of all three of those things. So why start with the exercise? Why start trying to join a gym and working out five times a week if you can't even get your mindset and diet sorted first? Please don't think that doing 20-minute workouts, doing burpees, you know, is going to be your quick way out. Joining a spin class, doing the Zumba once a week is going to be your quick way out of the unhappiness you feel right now. No. Yes, they help. Do you know that a burpee burns around about 14 calories okay, per minute, non-stop for a minute. So I want you to imagine 10 minutes of straight burpees. And if you somehow managed to do that, and I challenge anyone to, you'd burn about 140 calories. And that's assuming you didn't rest and slow things down. That's a scary thought. Now, that doesn't mean they're pointless because it, it, you know, it helps many systems in the body. Okay, So exercise is obviously important. But mindset and nutrition have to come first. You've got to start off with getting rid of your excuses of why you can't do this. Be grateful of why you can do this. Write that down. Get journaling. Get goal setting. You know, do the things I mentioned on this show. Then get your nutrition in gear. Okay, clear out all the shit, get into the habit of cutting down rather than cutting out. Don't go following Slimming World where you slap points on everything and get rid of avocado. No. Start getting your calories in check and understanding that you need to move more and make better quality decisions with your nutrition. And then start focusing on your exercise. Now, I'm not saying you can't do them all at the same time, but all three have to be in place. Guys, that's it for today. Thank you for listening. Uh, I will be back next week um, with my guest. I've got a few guests lined up. So this was the first solo podcast in a while of the Barbells with Banter podcast. Uh, If you would like to be considered to join as a guest, please drop a message. Uh, Go and follow me, social media, Instagram, Facebook, both at Callum Sully Fitness is the handle. TikTok is the same. 
make sure if you're watching this on YouTube to hit that subscribe button. Uh, if you're listening to this on uh, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, hit that follow button to be up to date when I post a new episode. Um, and of course, um, my email is info at Person Training. If you'd like to drop me any questions after you've listened to this, we'd like um, me to answer anything, talk about anything on this podcast specifically that would help you. I'm always, I'm always open to taking um, suggestions of what people need help with. That's what I'm here for. Guys, thank you very much for listening. I uh, hope you are um, having a great autumn as we get ready for the Christmas season. And I will hear, I will be back on this podcast giving you guys information again very, very soon. Guys, take care and have a great day.